Hello, my name is Duncan Mackey, I'm, and I'm your host for Real Cooking. And today, um, I'm going to be interviewing Brian Kelly from Whitefly Outfitters, um, West Virginia. Uh, and uh, this is my project for English class. So I have to interview someone that I want to be when I'm older. And I chose fly fishing and, wor and working in a fly shop. So. Question one, when did you start fly fishing? I started fly casting. You have to cast, yeah, you have to walk it. before you can run. I started fly casting when I was six. And I didn't get a line wet until I was about 11. We didn't live close to any water. Yeah. We lived in a very city part of Pittsburgh. So to, to get, to, I wasn't able to drive at age six, obviously, yeah. and to uh, be able to get to uh, fishing destinations, I had to rely on my brother, mm -hmm. who, when I turned 11, he turned 17, so he was able to drive, and then that's when we were able to start going fishing on our own. Uh, another, like a, uh, another part to question one, who? How did you get interested in fly fishing? Well, again, it goes back to that same time frame, of course. Why, why would you stand in the backyard and cast a fly line with no hook on it, knowing not, you're not going to catch anything yeah. for hours and hours on a day? What would be your motivation? Well, um, my brother had, obviously, he's several years older than me, mm -hmm. and I looked up to him very much. and. Um, he had a book, because we didn't have internet back then or YouTube to learn how to do things. He had a book by Gad About Gaddis. And Gad About Gaddis also was a TV celebrity at that time. He was on Wild World of Sports, and he would go out to destinations and catch fish. And we would watch that show on Saturday mornings, and he'd go to Alaska and catch salmon on a fly rod. And we had the book. We dissect the book, we read the book, we'd go and try, and, and it had little pictures of how to fly cast in there, and that's how we learned how to fly cast. Question two, what is a day like at the shop? Well, it can be a lot of different things. It, and the thing about being an entrepreneur mm -hmm. is you have to wear many hats. Mm -hmm. You have to be willing to scrub, scrub the floors and wash the dishes and clean the toilets and you also have to uh, be good with banking and financing and in our case because um, uh, fly fishing apparel has a lot of different graphics in it you have to be good with understanding art and mm -hmm. and how it's uh, applied to different materials um, and you have to be able to speak well with clients and yeah. be very knowledgeable so a, a, a given day can be behind the counter working with clients all day long and not getting a break. Or another day you might be sitting behind the computer entering in data. Mm -hmm. And it's just boring barcodes and SKU numbers and item numbers and pictures and adding them to the website. So um, it can be a lot of different things and you have to be able to wear a lot of different hats. Uh, question three, how many people sign up for a guiding trip? Well, I just did that data, and again, a lot of it is reviewing past data. Um, typically, we like to shoot for um, between 85 and 125 trips a year, and that's when 125 is when we're rocking and rolling. The ecosystem's good. There's plenty of fish. The weather all works out, and the economy is good. So you have to have all those th three things, four things, in line uh, to have a successful year guiding. Um, you have to be able to be versatile, flexible, just kind of like a football team. Mm -hmm. You could look at it like a sport. You know, you have to you have to be deep. You have to have your backups. You know, and I have. Um, Doug, who's a school teacher, who I rely on a lot to help me out during guide, guide trips. Um, and a guy named Jedediah, who's a um, paramedic. 
and their schedule is such that he gets a couple days off every week so he can pick up a day if I need him. So our, our goal is, uh, as I said, to do between 85 and 125. 125 is probably the best we've ever done in the Mid-Atlantic area, th keeping in mind that our guide season, we'd like to say it's six months long, but of the two shoulder months, March and October, you might only get two weeks or 10 days out of those months that are good. So you really look at a six month, month period, but it's probably only four months. So when you're doing 125 trips in 120 days, you're rocking and rolling. Mm -hmm. um, so last year we did 80, last year was a bad year because we're coming off of a flood year the year before. Yeah. Um, so uh, the demand um, was very up and down. Um, and you had to be forefront with your clients saying that, hey, you know, there's really not that many fish out there. You're not going to catch the numbers that we did two years ago where you'd go down the river and catch 60 to 70 fish a day. Um, it's more like 12 or 15 fish a day on a good day, and you might get one big one. You know, we're really targeting one big trophy fish, and to put that all together, the guide's got to be on his game, the client's got to be on his game, the conditions have to be right, and the spot has to be right, and the fish have to be willing to bite. So you got a lot of variables there. So we did pretty good for a, for a bad year last year. Okay, question four. How do you help the ecosystem? Well, we do a lot in helping the ecosystem. One is through education. Mm -hmm. You know, we really want to... Our, one of my and our goals here at the fly shop is education, educating the public, you know, mm -hmm. how to do it right. Uh, don't hold the fish vertical if it's a big fish. Um, you know, let those fish go, practice catch and release, mm -hmm. um, you know, keep the fish in the water, you know, keep it wet photography, keep that fish in the water, get the camera ready, get the camera focused, then hold the fish up and then get them back in the water as quickly as possible. Um, and then <clears throat> I, I do a lot of volunteer work with um, the um, Department of Natural Resources here in West Virginia and in Maryland. And we're lucky enough that we're close to USGS, which is the, um, the, the national um, um, Department of Natural Resources, essentially. Um, United States uh, Geological um, Survey. And what they do is they, mo they monitor the environment from the moon to the uh, um, sun to the earth, to the trees, to the uh, geology, to bottoms of the ocean, to the fish, to the animals. They are, they are their job in the, United Sta in, the, in the United States is to monitor the ecosystem in the entire world and universe. So um, they, they count on me for fish um, reports. Are, are, the, are the fish healthy? Is their length to weight ratio looking good? Or are they all real skinny and emaciated? Do you see any signs of wounds or injuries? Um, are they dying when you release them? Um, is there a blue-green algae hatch anywhere that needs to be reported? So um, we do a lot uh, behind the scenes that you never hear white fly outfitters did this on this day to help the environment. Um, and we do do um, streamside, we're, we're involved in streamside cleanups, and uh, we have kind of a um, unwritten shop rule that take more away as far as garbage goes. When we lunch at a spot, there's typically, you know, Kentucky Fried Chicken containers there, beer cans there. so. We carry a big 55-gallon garbage bag with us on every trip, and we get out of the boat, we set up camp for lunch, and we clean up the area. Nobody wants to have lunch with an uh, empty six-pack of beers sitting on the ground next to a campfire. So we clean that up, police that area, 
um, each time that we're, we're out. Uh, question five, do you tie flies for the shop? We do. We tie flies for resale and we tie flies for use on the guide trips. Uh, number six, what is the best part of your job? Gosh, uh, that's a tough one because there's so many different hats. Um, the best, even, even though you never get a day off, the best part of my job is I work for myself. Um, so if I need to um, take a day off, for example, um, you know, my mother got sick about a month ago and I had to go see her. And I didn't have to ask my boss and put in a vacation request and do all that. Now I had work I had to do to get done prior for me leaving. I had to set up enough work for the employees here to keep busy and gave them a detailed list of what to do while I was gone um, and that kind of stuff. But it, there are benefits of working for yourself. Uh, question seven, how many people come in the shop a day? Um, well, that's, that's also seasonal, you know. Of course, in the winter, oftentimes two or three people a day could come in and, and they're primarily shopping for um, fly tying material or they're tourists and they're traveling through the area coming to see Har beautiful Harper's Ferry and they might want to come back and do a guide trip. So they come in and they ask about a guide trip. So um, selling materials, tying flies, talking about guide trips, um, that could be a slow day. Um, and in the summer, we could have upwards to 100 people easily come into the shop a day. And at that point, you know, we usually, during peak season, I usually like to have two people here. Uh, during the off season, typically it's just me or Greg. We kind of split it up. Um, that way we're just not burning the candle at both, both ends. We get each other a couple days off in the off season so that we can do things that you need to do, honeydew lists and, and spend time with your family and, and your, your kids and that kind of thing. Gregory today is at a wedding, so that's why he's off. So luckily we have that. If this was peak season, I would have uh, had to bring Doug in, you know, because I wouldn't be able to handle 100 people by myself. So. Yeah. Uh, question eight, do I need to go to guiding school to become a guide? Well, you know, that's, that, the, no, the, an, the, the short answer is no. Um, typically what happens is um, it, it's going to happen naturally and, um, and, and um, you're either going to be a good fly fisherman or fisherman to begin with and then your friends, that's what happened with me anyway, my friends kept wanting to go fishing with me because when they fished with me, they always caught fish. Mm -hmm. And after three or four years, 20, 30, 40 trips of me coordinating the trip with my buddies, setting it up, um, going, knowing what flies to use, what fish are in the water, how they're going to feed, they would say to me, hey, you should do this for a living because every time we fish with you, we catch fish. Mm -hmm. So that's kind of how I got involved. I kind of back-ended it. And remember, um, we got started in 1995 guiding. So again, no YouTube, no guide schools were out. There weren't those kind of things. Now, what we do do here is we row a, a whitewater raft. So it does take some skill to learn how to do that raft row that raft and keep that raft in position. Um, so a guide school would help in learning to do that or you go get your a raft on your own and learn to do that for a couple years and, and be like that story I just told you. Um, but each year we need to be um, first uh, wilderness first aid um, certified and CPR certified. That's the important thing of our training is safety first. Question nine. 
Do you do fly fishing at expos? We used to. We used to do a lot. And uh, the biggest one in this region is Somerset, New Jersey. And we did Somerset, New Jersey for 15 consecutive years. Um, and we finally found out, and again, this is a lot, uh, you have to, not only do you have to wear the hats of taking out the garbage and doing data entry and selling fly tying material and rowing a boat and fixing bearings on trailers, but you have to also be a marketing analysis a analyzer. You have to know what works for you. Mm -hmm. Now those those expos can cost thousands of dollars to go to one of those expos. A lot of people don't think of that. They're like, oh yeah, they're here, you know, it's nice, get a business card, uh, that kind of thing. Um, but no, it costs the vendor thousands of dollars to be there. In addition to um, the hotel stay, the transportation costs, all those things. And what we found was. <clears throat> Um, by the phone, I hung up a clipboard and I said, when somebody called the book a fly fishing trip, I want you to ask them, where did you hear about us? And you hear a lot of companies do that, right? I mean, it's not uncommon. Mm -hmm. And um, for, so I put, we had advertising in magazines, fishing magazines. We had advertising in um, the Washingtonian magazine. We had the internet um, and I put referral or trade show, okay? And what we did for an entire year was we asked people where they heard of us or how they found out about us. And <clears throat> actually it was over several years we did this analysis. And when we were doing the shows back in the late 90s, before the internet became really, really popular, we would have, you know, 15 check marks next to trade show or expo. And we'd have one or two behind, by the ad, magazine advertisement, and we'd have five or six on the referrals. Well, as we went through the years, it went from, and the internet came online, um, it went from expos to almost exclusively, oh, we found you online. So we stopped doing the expos, we stopped doing um, the print magazines, and we basically do email, which is and Facebook and Twitter and um, our website. Uh, question 10, where did you catch your biggest fish on the Shenandoah? on the Shenandoah. Um, it was me personally or me guiding? Because those are uh, oh, let's answer both. Okay, yeah. okay. Uh, me personally, uh, it was an, I was out doing, uh, doing an early, early pre-spawn research trip, which I do every year. Um, typically, I'll either go by myself or I'll get one of the other guides to come with us. And, and we use that trip for a lot of reasons. Um, you know, the bearings on the trailers have been sitting all year. We want to get that out. We want to get the <clears throat> boat off the trailer and make sure that there's nothing wrong with the bed of the trailer. The boat has air in it, doesn't have any leaks in it, over, didn't get any leaks over the winter. Um, um, the ore locks need to be moved around and lubricated. So all that kind of stuff, you're breaking down your gear. You know, you're really working on your gear, your rods, um, different, different lures, different flies. To, you know, uh, you're getting your getting new fly line on your line. You're, you're matching the fly line to the line. So we're working. We're not just going down the river floating the whole time. So you're mixing stuff up. And it was in a set of rapids just above uh, Shenandoah, on the on the uh, Shenandoah where I caught um, my biggest bass, which was 22 inches, and um, my we caught we have caught lots of 
20 inch fish, which are, you know, citations in Maryland and Virginia, they're trophy fish, you know. Our clients have caught lots of 20 inch fish, 20 and a half inch fish. Very few, probably maybe 15, 21 inch fish. So to get a 22 inch fish, the 22 club mm -hmm. is is very exclusive club to be in. So that's where my fish was. And then um, I was I was um, guiding actually my son and his buddy, okay. Um, and it was a late late fall trip. And it was again it was after the season was over. It was a nice day in November. And we decided to go ahead and do this spur of the moment trip. And his fish that he caught was a 22 and a half inch fish. So he beat you by a half inch. He beat me by a half inch and he still has, has that to this day. But, uh, you know, we've caught, um, we've only caught in, in, in guiding Doug, myself, Jedediah, you know, we've only probably, clients have only probably maybe six clients have caught 22 and a half inch fish over the 20 years that we've been in business. So a 22 and a half inch smallmouth is very, very rare. That's an old fish. That, that's a pretty old fish. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you for your time. Thank um, you. I'm going to be looking forward uh, to seeing you um, in December when you're doing the classes, Okay. fly time classes. Uh, and uh, I'm going to go get some materials. Awesome. And hope you have a good season. Well, thanks for thinking of me for the interview. I appreciate that. And I hope everything works out well for you. Thank you. All right.